Hi everyone, this is Will with KL Aviation, and this lesson comes to us thanks to a question posted on our website klaviation.com. John asks how we would file a flight plan from an airport that does not have a standard instrument departure procedure. So here we are in lower Alabama, southern Alabama. We're looking at the Troy Municipal Airport. For this example, we want to go from Troy to Pensacola Airport, which is down here to the southwest. And to do so, we're either going to need to use Victor 70 or Victor 20 to get there. Okay, so now that we have a basic idea of our route, let's look at how we could correctly file this flight plan. Now, Troy Airport does not have any navigational aids on it, and it doesn't lie on any Victor Airway. So we first have to decide how we're going to get from Troy to either Victor 70 or to Victor 20. The important rule to remember when you're doing this is that when you intercept an airway, you have to do so at a known point along that airway, whether it's a defined intersection or a navigational aid that's on that airway. We can't simply just intercept the airway anywhere that we please. And this is basically due to two factors. One, if you just fly out to intercept an airway, there's no guarantee where you're going to intercept that airway based on winds and other things. So let's say we want to intercept Victor 7 here, and we want to follow it southbound towards the uh, Wiregrass VOR, which is down off to the south here. Well, we take off out of Troy, and uh, we're going to fly, let's say, let's say we know we want to fly a heading of uh, 090 to get to uh, Victor 7. So take off out of Troy, and we're flying 090. Well, unbeknownst to us, we also have a 40 knot wind blowing right out of the northwest at us. So as we track this 090, we actually get pushed right here. Well, what's going to happen? We've missed this little turn in the intersection, in the airway already. So now when we're looking to intercept this uh, 126 radial off of uh, Montgomery, we're going to do so out here and start flying outbound looking for our band B intersection which we've already passed up. It's a quick and easy way to get off course. The other reason that we can't do it is basically for air traffic control's sake. We can't just take off, intercept the airway, and go because air traffic control doesn't know where we're going to intercept that airway either. They could give you a heading and a vector to do so, which is on them, and they know what they're doing for that. But we can't just do it on our own. So now that we know that we can't just fly out and intercept this airway, we're going to have to pick some fixes to fly to so that we can properly file this flight plan. Okay, so now that we know we can't just fly straight to the airway, let's take a look at how we could file this. We know we need to go to a known point. So let's look at the known points that we have. On Victor 20 up here, we have the known point of Montgomery VOR, which is very easy for us to fly to. We're well within its service volume. We could just take off, go straight to Montgomery, and then continue down Victor 20 to uh, the Monroeville VOR, which is down off this direction here, and on course. It takes us a little bit out of our way, but it's not nearly as bad if we want to look at nav aids as Victor 70, where we would have to go all the way over here to Eufaula and then all the way back. That would just be ridiculously out of the way, so we don't want to do that. So we could look at the first version of our flight plan, where we would go from Troy to the Montgomery VOR to Victor 70 or correction, Victor 20, to Monroeville, to Pensacola. That would be a perfectly legal and good flight plan, because we know what we're doing. Troy, Montgomery, Victor 20, Monroeville, to Pensacola. Okay, so now that we know how to do this from a nav aid, let's look at a little bit more direct solution for us. 
we want to go from Troy to this Rutel intersection right here to Victor 70 on course. That's a nice, quick, easy way to get down on course. Well, how can we do that? First off, we don't have GPS on board, so we can't just fly Troy to Rutel. All we have is a couple VORs and an NDB receiver. Is there any way that you can think of that you could get from Troy to Rutel? Well, to find the answer, we have to dig a little bit deeper into the instrument procedures than just looking at the low altitude chart. If we looked at Troy and figured out it didn't have a standard instrument departure procedure, we must have looked at the terminal procedures publication or the approach plates by the, published by the FAA. So let's take a look at one of those and see how we could possibly get from Troy to Rutel. Okay, here we're looking at the NDB Runway 7 to Troy Airport. Now you're thinking, what on earth does this approach plate have to do with how I'm going to depart the airport? Well, the approach plate gives us several very important pieces of information, like altitudes and courses to fly. Now we often think of these altitudes and courses as ways to get to the approach path. And while that's their primary purpose on an approach plate, they're also valid IFR routes since they're published on the plate. So as we can see here, Rutel is actually on the NDB Runway 7 approach plate. And Rutel actually has a course and altitude to fly to the Blood NDB which is located conveniently enough just a few miles from the Troy Airport. So if we wanted to get to Rutel, we could file our flight plan like this. Troy, TO, which is the Blood NDB, Rutel, Victor 70, and then we'll go down to Pensacola. This is the quickest and easiest way to get to our destination. Okay, I know I've thrown a lot out here, so let's just boil it down into the simplest terms possible. When we take off from an airport that does not have a standard instrument departure procedure, any of these airports, even uh, the Montgomery Airport up here, does not have a standard instrument departure procedure. So when we take off from an airport that does not have a standard instrument departure procedure, the first fix in our flight plan is always, 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 always going to be some known point that we can fly to to get onto an airway or to define our route. We're not going to just put airport, airway. We're going to go airport, known point, then airway. And that goes for VORs or intersections. That's the simplest way to file your IFR flight plan from an airport that does not have an instrument departure procedure. Now, after saying all of this, a lot of you are going to come back with the fact that air traffic control is probably going to give you headings and vectors to get on course. And that is absolutely correct. If we're taking off out of the Troy Airport IFR, Air traffic control is probably going to give us some kind of heading to fly to intercept an airway and get ourselves on course. And that's so they know where we're going. They know the terrain and altitude separations that they need. They could safely get us on course. But when we actually go and file that flight plan, send it to air traffic control, we're going to have to do it this old fashioned way and go known point to an airway. I hope this lesson explains how you need to file that flight plan from an airport without a standard instrument departure procedure. I look forward to your comments and I look forward to more questions at klaviation.com. I'll see you in the next lesson. Don't forget there's more great content at klaviation.com.